Hi, I'm Brad Dacus, president and founder of the Pacific Justice Institute. Welcome to Faith and Law. Now let's take a look at this latest trending viral video. About when an adult employee misgenders I'm you so intentionally. Why she's talk why he's talking, you're talking. You just time. misgendered me again. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. Multiple times. Gotcha. Both of you have. Sorry. Don't apologize. It wasn't intentional, but if you yeah. want to take it personal. That's also well, she thing. did do it intentionally twice. I talking to me too. You said she and then you said he. You're being condescending, and if you want to continue, Ooh, I have yes. Port Authority escort you out the building. Right Way to go. If you want to play that game with me. Okay. Would you like to continue three days before Christmas? I really don't mind. Way to go. I'll just put this on. Well, folks, I don't know about you, but I feel so happy to see someone standing their ground and their conviction. Uh, we have had so much wokeism, uh, so much radical LGBTQ correctness uh, slammed down our throats, uh, forcing us to apologize when we have nothing to apologize for. Uh, these people were not deliberately going out of their way to insult someone. Uh, this person uh, was trying to profess to, to be a different gender than what they actually were, than what they actually came across being. So... They have no grounds to uh, object and to act like a jerk with regards to these Delta employees. Uh, I'm just excited to see this employee standing his ground. And I will say something uh, loud and clear. If Delta fires this employee for standing his ground for his own self-respect and not to allow himself to be demeaned, and put down by this person with this radical, dogmatic, intolerant agenda, we at Pacific Justice Institute would be glad to hire him. We will find a place for him. And not only Pacific Justice, but I bet there's lots and lots of businesses across America that would love to have someone with this kind of character and conviction and professionalism joining their team. This should be an example, folks to Christians and people of faith and just common decency and conscience uh, across America not to take this kind of garbage and intimidation anymore, to do so lovingly, respectfully, but not surrendering their convictions, surrendering their grounds to an agenda that they do not agree with. This is America. This is the land of the free. Let's keep it that way. All rights are a gift from God, and they're to be used for God's glory and to further God's kingdom. We're opening the door for government under the same guise of health and safety to be able to control our lives, whether it's in terms of our privacy, our information, where we go, even how we live our lives. I had been told that if I didn't get the vaccine that I would be not be able to continue my education. 31 offices across the country handling over 185 cases in active litigation. This just doesn't come out of thin air. The Supreme Court of the United States ruled in our favor. This year, police arrested a Christian man exercising his right to free speech. Friends of parents were at the state capitol day and they were protesting new guidelines for sex education in public schools. The world's way is to isolate, silence, and destroy. So you really seeking to represent the low-profile, overlooked group of people yes. in our communities, but then you also don't charge a cent. And so I want to know why you do that and how that happens. Uh, we do it uh, because I believe that's what Jesus would want us to do. But we're also involved in what's taking place in the workplace. In fact, we've taken on countless numbers of cases dealing with employees who've been persecuted, who've been fired because of their sincerely held religious beliefs and convictions, whether it's dealing with pronouns or dealing with an objection to taking a very controversial COVID vaccine. To help us talk about one of these cases and a unique spin that we haven't seen much before that I think needs to be addressed, uh, we'd like to bring on now our attorney, Catherine Hartley, from our office in Idaho, uh, welcome to the program, Catherine. Thank you for having me, Brad. Now, Catherine, I understand that the client you're representing right now is a nurse who is also not just being fired, but also is being required to have to pay back uh, money 
that was a part of an advanced educational program that was being sponsored by uh, her employer or the state. Uh, what, what's going on here? Yes, this particular client not only dealt with the fallout of being terminated from her job and, and everything that goes along with that, but additionally, she had an agreement with the state of Colorado and the state was assisting her in paying back her, her student loans from her advanced degree. And part of that agreement was that she remained employed by her particular employer or a similar employer. And when she was fired, the state immediately demanded she repay this loan. Now, we've seen large companies and the military dropping their vaccine mandates, and yet we still see these cases popping up. Why? Yes, I think there's several reasons why these cases are, are now popping up. Uh, the first is that the administrative process can be lengthy. So as we know, before these cases can be filed, these Title VII cases, they have to go through the EEOC or state equivalent. And sometimes that process can be lengthy, which is why some of these lawsuits are now just coming up. Uh, there's, there's, I also think it is because some employees don't want to go back to their employer, even if, if that is an option for them. I think that they were hurt by being fired for their beliefs and that they moved on and even possibly found other options out of necessity. Now, if we see our society on such a massive scale being willing to purge people from the workplace because of their faith, what does this tell us about our society moving forward? I think it shows that these cases, all of these cases show um, that freedoms are, are fragile. Our freedoms are fragile. And we have seen that uh, immensely the last few years. Uh, and we are are seeing whether or not we truly have our freedoms, our freedoms of speech, our religious liberty, um, despite there being an emergency and despite those beliefs being unpopular. And I think, uh, you know, defending the unpopular opinion or the unpopular belief is what actually will characterize how how free we are. And in these cases in particular related to the COVID vaccine, it was a very unpopular belief to not take the vaccine, especially in the workplace, as we know. And so many of our cases reflect that. And so it's, it's important that we see through these cases that even though it was unpopular, that our religious freedom is still intact. Well, Catherine, this is a very important, a very unique case with some of the facts involved here. Uh, how do you see this case ending up? Uh, how do you see this case progressing? Well, we have our work cut out for us um, to demonstrate the special, I will say, damages that this particular client has. And we will work hard to do that and hopefully uh, achieve a great outcome for her. Well, thank you very much for the work that you're doing. Keep up the great work there in the state of Idaho. Um, we're going to be watching this case, folks, and cases like it as we continue to work and strive uh, to defend people out there still being purged from their job, fired from their job, simply because of their sincerely held religious beliefs. Now, folks, we at Pacific Justice Institute are taking on more and more cases all across the country. Through our many offices, coast to coast, we do it all without charge. And the only way we can take on these cases the way we do and take hill after hill after hill in these battles is because of the commitment and the support from people like you. Well, we've got something exciting. Uh, we have a matching monthly gift program. So if you give a contribution here in the month of January and you commit to a, a monthly amount of, of any amount, any amount at all, it will be matched dollar for dollar, not just for January, but for the next 12 months, all throughout 2024, it will be matched dollar for dollar. Go to Pacific Justice Institute's website, pji.org. That's P for Pacific, J for Justice, I for Institute.org, pji.org. 
and become a part of a solution, become a part of the team, and let's make a difference in 2024. Now, folks, we love to look at what's happening in the courts. We like to look at what's happening in the news. But at the end of the day, we always need to go back to Scripture. That's our foundation, right? So let's take a look at the Word of God and what the Word of God has to say about these issues and challenges we're facing today. Romans chapter 8, verse 18, it says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Now, mind you, this was being written by the Apostle Paul. This is the guy who had already gone through a lot of persecution, who went through a lot of persecution. And he talked about the fact that the sufferings of the present time that he was going through was nothing compared to what awaited him in heaven with the Lord. Folks, this should be a reminder to all of us as we're going through persecution, whether we're losing our jobs, whether our church is being shut down, whatever it is, yes, we need to contest the injustice. We shouldn't stand by and just let it happen by any means. But at the same time, we shouldn't allow ourselves to be discouraged either. We need to remember that this is par for the course to some extent of being a Christian, that persecution is something that the church has always gone through. And instead of cowering, instead of being timid, no, we need to remain faithful with the exhortation that God has given us as believers uh, to be sharers of the faith, to be uh, living the faith, practicing the faith unapologetically to the world around us that desperately needs to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, Redeemer, and as our Savior. So this is something that we need to to do, we need to practice and not be intimidated. Just like the Apostle Paul wasn't intimidated, uh, he was willing to endure, so let us endure because we know what awaits us is so much better than anything this world has to offer. By the way, what's the worst they can do to us? Kill us. That's the worst they can do to us. Well, you know what? We have to die someday, right? Um, I don't know about you, but I'd rather die for Jesus than die in a hospital with an IV hooked up to me for several weeks. That's just me, okay? Maybe I've got a problem. Uh, maybe i got a martyrdom complex. I don't know. But the point is, there's nothing they can do to us that is going to compare in any way with the awesomeness that awaits us in heaven. And that needs to be our perspective. That needs to be our drive. Uh, the disciples in the early church, mind you, um, they had every right to be discouraged. When Jesus was crucified, it looked like it was over right? It's easy to think that things are just over and done with. And yet what happened? The resurrection happened. God is a great way of making the ends the, be the beginnings. And what seemed to be the end to the disciples was just the beginning of something new and something greater, much greater. In the same way in the early church, when the Roman Empire fell, uh, the early church, many people thought, this is the end. You know, it was great while it lasted. The church had strength, had prominence in the Roman Empire, in the latter part of the Roman Empire before it fell, had a strong position of great influence. When the Roman Empire fell, many in the early church back then, they thought, okay, it's over. It's done. Uh, you know, we had our influence. We had our time. Boy, were they wrong. No, it was just beginning. And God used that in a way to spread the gospel even more because with God— all things are possible. All things are possible. No matter what we're going through, do not be discouraged. God is a great God of making things that seem like the end become the beginning and the beginning of something much greater than we could ever think of or imagine. Now, the other verse I'd like to take a look at is Isaiah 5, verse 20. Isaiah 5, verse 20. It says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. The reality is, folks, our culture today is doing just that. It's saying that which is good is evil and that which is evil is good. 
We have massive numbers in our society who are cheering on terrorism, uh, who are cheering on uh, the persecution of the Jewish people, uh, who are attacking Christians, calling Christians uh, domestic terrorists, uh, trying to put them in a corner, uh, to frame them in a way that makes them easier to persecute, to attack, to demean, to fire. We also see a society that is uh, clearly hostile towards people who believe in what the Bible says. Uh, For example, marriage. God made marriage. God says marriage is good. And yet our society today is condemning people who are pro-marriage. They are condemning people who want to stay with God's word. Instead, they want to distort marriage. They want to pervert marriage. They want to uh, pervert sexuality. They even want to uh, distort genders. God created us male and female. They want to distort genders and promote gender distortion throughout our society. This is what we're living in, folks. This is the reality. And yet, let us be a light amidst the darkness. Remember this. The light is always, always more powerful than the darkness. And all we have to do as believers is to be followers of Jesus, followers of his word, to cling to the Lord. And he will allow his light, not our light, his light, to shine through us impacting darkness. There may be some people not taking it the right way. There's not people who are, there are people out there who are going to be very hostile to us when they see the light, who may want to give us a black eye. But you know what? There are also people out there in the darkness that will see the light, they'll be convicted, and they'll respond to it, they'll repent, and they'll come to Jesus, and they'll be set free from the darkness. Let us be faithful with what God's given us for this day and this hour. Let us be givers of the light, the same light that set us free, who were once in darkness ourselves. So folks, remember this. We're going to have challenges, but no matter what the challenge is, no matter what the persecution, always, always keep the faith. Religious freedom, medical freedom, free speech, censorship issues. I think people on the right are going to get hammered in 2024, and that's why it's so important that we have representation. And sometimes the ACLU gets it right. But I met somebody at Turning Point USA from the Pacific Justice Institute, Brad Dacus. How are you, sir? Oh, doing great, David. It was great meeting you at at that wonderful event. And uh, I don't know about you, but I left it uh, all the more encouraged to see all those young people uh, excited about our country, uh, our freedom, our liberties, and willing to do something about it. And of course, we at PJI, uh, we've pledged to defend every single one of those students, every single one of those Turning Point USA chapters all across America without charge. It was definitely encouraging to see so many uh, like-minded younger people, but a lot of older generation uh, generations showed up as well to support the young people and are concerned about our country. Um, and it's, uh, you know, you're going to be in high demand in 2024. Tell us about what the Pacific Justice Institute does. Yeah, we will be in high demand. <laughs> I, <agree. laughs> I might be calling you. <laughs> yes. 
Well, you know, we, we defend religious freedom uh, for everyone, parents' rights across the country against, you know, wacky school districts or zealous social workers uh, to take kids. Uh, wrongfully, we defend the sanctity of human life, so the preborn, or, uh, or even people who are in the hospital who uh, are told uh, that are, you know, their loved ones are told, you know, pull the plug, pull the plug, and the, and the person's not dead and, and they're still there. So we have a lot of interesting cases that in the past I just never would have uh, dreamed we would, we would reach this point in our society on all three of those levels, dealing with religious freedom, parents' rights, and sanctity of life. Uh, what makes us sort of unique is that, you know, of course, uh, we you know, do our work without charge, every single one of our cases without charge. But we don't cherry pick our cases, so we don't just go for the, you know, cher- you know, the high profile cases, just a few cases here and there. Our goal is to make sure that everyone gets help, that no church, no family, no uh, business, you know, owner, you know, is left on the side of the road. We go to bat for them and uh, all without charge. And we have the largest network, uh, the largest uh, number of offices we have. 29 in 29 states, we have 36 offices coast to coast doing all the work without charge, making sure that no one's left on the side of the road. So we're very, very busy and our cases are increasing dramatically. We have, I think, over 255 cases in active litigation right now alone. Wow, and you have a very high success rate. Tell us about that. Yeah, we do. We really do. And a part of that is, I know, it's God's grace and favor. But a lot of it's also uh, hard work and not doing C grade work, but doing A grade work when it comes to our, our doing our research on our cases, on our clients, uh, preparing the complaints, the briefing, et cetera, the strategy, all our attorneys work together. So all co- combined, our, our case victory uh, rate is more than, uh, is better than nine out of 10. So more than 90% of our cases we, we prevail in for our clients and we do it completely without charge. Uh, it's pretty incredible, but we do our homework. We do uh, excellent work um, for our clients and uh, it takes a lot of work to get that kind of high success rate. Yeah, there was a couple on the ground uh, that I met. I gave them your phone number. Hopefully they contacted your offices. Um, the, you know, the woman wouldn't uh, didn't want to vax. Now it's three years later. Um, she needs a double lug transplant and quick. And in Phoenix and all the hospitals have turned her down. So uh, is that someone someone like that? Is that someone that you can help? Oh, absolutely. In fact, we're, I think, leading the charge across the country in those kinds of cases. Uh, where out of our Detroit office, uh, the person who heads head, head that up, uh, Dr. David Peters is not only an attorney, but he's also a doctor and has great expertise. And we've already seen the success. We've saved two individuals uh, from a hospital, uh, I think it was called uh, Trinity Hospital, where they were told uh, that, you know, you have to get the vax or you die. Basically, they were being put on medical death row. Uh, wow. It was it was outrageous. Uh, and uh, we stepped in, we prevailed. Then we had to sue uh, University of Michigan Medical Center. Uh, we prevailed there as well for two individuals in critically in need of, of organ transplants. So we're really stepping up. We're taking these cases on all across the country. It's literally a matter of life and death as we move forward. Wow. Um, very interesting stuff. Now, what separates you? Uh, I know we were joking uh, earlier about the ACLU. Sometimes they get it right. Um, but what, what separates you from that? Are you, are you committed to like conservative principles? Uh, what, what's the difference? Yeah, and, and I want to give the ACLU credit uh, from where they first started. Uh, they did some really good work. Uh, they really did for free speech uh, in particular. Um, but the ACLU has changed dramatically uh, since its founding and formation. In fact, two of our attorneys are ex-ACLU attorneys, um, partly because they became Christians and they have a, a different worldview and they end up in perspective of liberty and religious freedom. So we at Pacific Justice Institute, we can agree with them at times on some free speech cases, perhaps um, not as much as in the past because they're not as in favor of free speech as they used to be. They're much more selective as to what kind of speech is protective. Uh, is it uh, leftist speech? Um, they're real quick to, to defend that, but not as quick to defend uh, people who have a traditional speech, religious speech, uh, or convictions that are not a part of the uh, the, the, the progressive movement. So uh, that's one way area we're different. We defend free speech, truly free speech. Um, we're also 
uh, don't believe in, in allowing the establishment clause to be misinterpreted. They're real big on using the establishment clause to create a society of, uh, where we have freedom from religion. In fact, in law school at the University of Texas, where I went, uh, I had a professor who was an ACLU attorney. And uh, he used the phrase just flippantly. He said, you know, like, the, you know, the freedom from religion clause. And I said, whoa, whoa wait a minute, professor. Um, isn't it actually freedom of religion? He goes, uh, yes, that's right. That's right. So we have a different perspective in terms of the Establishment Clause. The Establishment Clause is to protect institutions and people of faith, uh, not to persecute them and right. to treat them uh, and their speech differently. <clears throat> so what about, um, we have a few more minutes, but really quick, like uh, Governor Bashar in Kentucky was, I think he was writing down people's license plate numbers using the police when they were attending church during COVID. Uh, is that a, a type of issue that you would represent? Oh, yes, uh, particularly if that information was. Oh, yeah, civil liberties. Oh, we've defended countless numbers of churches who were shut down. In fact, we're the ones who, by God's grace, were able to get a case to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court, it, with an emergency injunction, voted six to three, ordering Governor Gavin Newsom of California open those churches and synagogues now. And he did. It was a dramatic victory that really helped turn the tide. I remember that. On the impression. And uh, in about a minute, minute and a half, tell us about parental rights issues, especially in California. Big victories, Chino Hills, Escondido, Orange County, Temecula, right? Oh, yes. Uh, we've been going to bat for parents on their rights to have information against uh, and, and defending school districts doing the right thing. But we have lawsuits in New Jersey, for example, defending uh, school districts are being told, you know, you have to lie to parents. Uh, you have to use pronouns. And don't let the parents know you're using pronouns that are encouraging confusion in these little children. Uh, we're taking these all, all across the country, especially in places like California and New York, and we do it uh, all without charge. Uh, it's it's a huge battle, but it's, we've, we've got to take it on. They are crazy in New Jersey. I'm in New York. Uh, it's just as bad. But I think in Jersey, it, it might be worse, actually, the school boards. 80% of the parents support these pornographic books in the schools that show up. And the people who show up, they're in the minority that are fighting. They're trying to protect the innocence of their children. It's all about preserving the innocence of our children, right? Right. Right. Oh, exactly. Uh, public schools have become, in the eyes of many, spiritual death camps yeah. uh, for a reason. And uh, they have become very dangerous in, uh, in many, if not most, places across the country, particularly on the East Coast and West Coast. Uh, we're taking every single one of them on as needed. Yeah, we, we, we see uh, Disney suffering the consequences of their agenda. So uh, people are fighting back. Uh, Brad, in 30 seconds, tell a view is where they can find you. You bet. If they'd like to uh, to get our case updates, our Legal Insider newsletter, or they want to support us uh, with a, a, a donation and become a part of our team uh, with a tax deductible donation, just go to pji.org. That's P for Pacific, J for Justice, I for Institute.org, pji.org. All right. Maybe I'll see you at CPAC and other events. I hope to have you back. Happy New Year to you and your family, Brad. Thank you. You too. All the best, Dave. Take yes, care. Yes, you too. Brad Dacus, founder and president of the Pacific Justice Institute. I want to bring you a message from our supporters, Switch to USA. Look at the bottom of...